What's up, witches? I want to talk to you today about a fascinating concept within Celto-European mythology, and that is this strange phenomenon which rides the skies this time of the year known as the Wild Hunt. And specifically, everyone's favorite all-father, Odin, as it relates to said phenomenon. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, what is the Wild Hunt? The term Wild Hunt comes from either the Germanic Wildjagd, which Jager means hunter, so everyone's favorite beverage Jagermeister means like master hunter or something like that. Yes, the, the wild hunt or wild jagd as it is, if I'm saying that right, as it's known in uh, Germania as a whole. Would you guys stop? So the wild hunt, as it's commonly known, was also called the Oscoria in some Scandinavian countries, which means Asgard ride. In other German folklore, you might see it referred to as Wutens Heer or Woden's Host or the Furious Host. This concept of the Wild Hunt, as I stated, is found throughout the, the British Isles in legends from the Welsh and other, you know, pre-Roman, pre-Christian Britannic cultures. It's also found throughout the Black Forest, Black Forest, the Black Forest area of Germania and the Gauls and also in the northern regions of Scandinavia. So it's very widespread versions of this tale that you will come across. One thing that all of the stories seem to have in common is that the Wild Hunt, which is this furious band of ghosts, spirits, ghouls, demons, um, just malicious entities usually is how it's depicted, that roam the countryside, typically from, you know, Samhain or Halloween night, All Hallows' Eve, and in some traditions, it rides all the way into midwinter or Yule. What it probably started at as was either a way of explaining natural phenomenon with the weather changing around this time of year and winter coming in. You know, especially here in the Great Plains, one thing that the winter season does not let you forget about is the power of the wind out here in the flatlands where there's nothing to act as a windbreak we've just i've just been feeling that seasonal change in the air for for a good solid month now and just feeling the cool chill winds sweeping in very brisk and high winds a lot of days especially out here and to me that is just pure odin energy you know, he's associated with the element of air and wind through being through speech and just in a lot of common descriptions you'll see of him in in the different myths and traditions so he was commonly thought to be the one leading this army of the dead this ghost army in on this wild hunt throughout the countryside and typically in a lot of the stories that you'll see about it it's very dangerous around this time of year for the unwary mortal traveler who might be caught out at night unawares by this raging band and usually if you are caught by them you will then be presented with a choice hunt or be hunted so in later uh, medieval and christian traditions what you might find especially in like the later um, Anglo-Saxon and British 
fairy tales is that instead of a Woden or Odin or a deity, you might see it led by some historical or semi-historical king, queen, or ruler who was either cursed in some way to having to lead this hunt forever, or perhaps, you know, in the, in the post-Christian versions because they weren't godly or pious enough or did something to make God mad, so he cursed them to have to lead this hunt as a ghost forever. What you'll see, especially uh, where comparative mythology is concerned, and particularly with the Germanic fables collected by the Brothers Grimm, Jacob Grimm in particular traced the origins of the Wild Hunt um, instead of it kind of being what you'll see now even in a lot of modern day fables such as, you know, the legend of Sleepy Hollow, which also involves, you know, having to being caught out at night by a ghost or a spirit and having to flee from it. Um, and it's like a, a vengeful or a, a spirit that's searching for something like the wild hunt might be. And in those types of cases, especially with like that early American literature and the puritanical societies that some of those works came out of, it could represent mankind's like deep primal fear of the untamed uncontrollable forces of nature because um, once you know you get out into the, the real wilderness it can be you know, very scary and I think a lot of stories would come up about the unseen unknown dangers that could be lurking in the woods but what Grimm thought was also that it might have stemmed from pre-Christian pagan traditions where you'll see things like the procession of the Freyr idol or the Nerthus idol and things like that, where the gods and goddesses would just kind of go on a tour of the countryside to bestow cheer and blessings upon the people and to see and be seen and to exchange blessings and offerings and receive them in return. And uh, it later in the Christian traditions, it just kind of devolved into, uh, like many uh, stories of pagan gods and goddesses, then kind of being shifted and attributed to evil, malicious, or dark forces instead. But it might have just originally been high holy season of the year where the gods and goddesses would kind of go out and about to give gifts and things to the people and kind of give us some things to help get us through the winter before the the dark months set in but i think it's also not too far off to um as i described earlier just with the seasonal changes and the cold weather coming in and the wind picking up and getting colder to kind of see that as some unseen rider or f uh, fleet cavalcade of riders blowing through the countryside. Um, but one other thing that is interesting about these stories of the wild hunt is that to me when you see it commonly being tied to Odin or Wotan as the leader of this army and it being called, you know, the Furious Host, it does call to mind, you know, the tales of him riding forth from Asgard with his army of Einherjar um, and the glorious Valiant Slain. And also what it kind of reminded me of was the descriptions that you'll find in the Roman accounts such as Tacitus's Germania, where he's kind of trying to describe what he sees of the Germanic tribes and their practices, and what you'll commonly see them refer to these gods as is that, you know, they try to kind of copy-paste it onto the, the Roman pantheon as best they can, and so the interesting thing is that, you know, their Mars, their god of war, battle, was usually compared more with Tyr, the, the earlier kind of head of the, the Germanic pantheon, if that's what you want to call it. They also referred a lot to a Mercury, who is Hermes, the messenger of the gods. And this, I think, 
was their way of referring to Odin because Odin as well as Freya are not just, you know, gods of war, knowledge, and magic as we see later, but very early on seemed to be much more of an emphasis on his role as a ferryman of the dead and a collector of dead souls. Much like Hermes, he was the one that, unlike a lot of the other gods, could travel back and forth to the underworld as well as uh, the other realms where like, that wasn't as easy for even the other deities to do. So not only will you see him just collecting his share of the dead to take to live in Valhall with him, there I've also seen a lot of stories and myths where even though like Hal is the ruler of the land of the dead and Helheim, Odin will take Sleipnir down to Hell, and he has his high seat in Asgard where he sits and watches and um, has all things with the gods and sits in judgment, but he also has a lower seat of judgment in Helheim, and that's where he goes to judge and appoint the places of the dead souls, which I thought was interesting. In my mind, that is why you will see Odin commonly said to be the one leading this army of ghosts, this army of the dead, dead champions, dead heroes. And um, you'll also see this phenomenon in the Welsh and Celtic myths with the wild hunt riding and being led by either Gwynap Nud or the Lord of the Otherworld or Underworld, which is called Anwim and he rides forth with his red and white hunting hounds, the, the Kun Anwin, the hounds of Anwin, uh, the hound, or hellhounds even if you want to call them that. And so you'll see there that um, I believe you might also find tie-ins with the horned god Karanunos or Hern as being involved in their version of the hunt, which is interesting. In some accounts, what I also thought was very interesting and something that I want to kind of delve into further as we get closer to Yule is that in a lot of accounts, you will see the Wild Hunt, Odin might not be leading it alone or leading it at all. Sometimes, in some versions, Wotan is accompanied by a female counterpart which would either be, you know, not necessarily said to be Odin's wife in the Norse myths, Frigg, but she is called Frau Hol, Frau Hola, Frau Hulda, um, which kind of sounds like Frau Holly, a common plant associated with winter and Yule. And she's also um, associated with the figure of the Germanic goddess Berkta or Perkta, which sounds a lot like the rune Berkano, which means birch. And Berkta is also said to be a goddess associated with birch trees and healing. And what's interesting about her, which I'll kind of touch on if I do end up doing a, a deep dive into her, is that she's kind of a female counterpart to Odin, where in some cases, and I think especially in like earlier versions, um, pre-Christian versions of the stories, she was this pagan goddess of the forest, birch trees, which are very white and have healing properties. So she was associated with light, purity, healing, you know, driving out illness and sickness, that kind of purification. Then as we kind of get further along into the Christian side of things, she also kind of gets flipped into this wicked witch or sorceress character where in some folk tales she can appear as like a young beautiful maiden, but it's just a trap to lure you in and once you actually get in there she turns into this evil old crone and gobbles you up or does who knows what with you. But in, in early versions, she was I also, I think, more of a beneficent figure. So you'll often see her riding along with the Wild Hunt, or in some cases, leading it herself. Because she, uh, Frau Hola or Hulda or Berkta in a lot of traditions, 
was not only said to be kind of a car farrier of souls or in later versions like a stealer of souls, but she was said to be particularly fond of taking the souls of children. And I think that's also kind of a twisting of her original purpose because much like Hell and her role and aspect as a caregiver of the dead, I think originally these goddesses like Frau Hola or Berkta would have been um, a kind steward of the dead and particularly fond of taking care of children and the young and the innocent. And it was corrupted eventually into this evil thing where she was deliberately seeking them out and taking them. But I, my own personal belief is that that's not what it would have originated as. That this concept and these figures associated were slowly twisted and corrupted and um, portrayed as evil or malicious throughout the year. I think originally they were more beneficent but it, it does kind of speak in my mind also to the transition of the goddess energy this time of year transitioning from one of like light and life into more of that crone aspect where it's the the dark time of year where everything is getting old and dying away and decaying for the year and the the earth itself just kind of goes into a dormant slumbering state and i think the the gods and the goddesses their energy reflects that as such so i don't know i don't know about any other pagans this time of year but i definitely will usually feel like the vanir energy like Frey and freya kind of taking a step back and not feeling it as much whereas like i said i've just been feeling the odin energy really ramping up the last month and the last couple weeks in particular I thought it was very fitting that we had Halloween, you know, All Hallows' Eve, which in some calendars, I think specifically like more Celtic calendars, you might actually see Samhain referred to as like basically New Year's Eve, and it starts off the, the new calendar year in some traditions, which is an interesting way of thinking about it because, you know, we had Halloween and then the very next day it seemed like we had the first frost here so it's definitely really driving home that you know winter is coming so i guess in conclusion for those of you like me who do enjoy all things spooky season and are kind of bummed out that halloween is over well you're in luck because in my opinion the wild hunt does ride from halloween all the way up through uh through yule or christmas time so if you want to choose to look at it that way as you know the ghostly riders are out there riding for the next month or so then you can kind of get in with like spooky season aspects of that to your heart's content because it has kind of taken on more of the, that um, fearsome aspect now over the years where, yeah, like I said, if you're caught by them, you either hunt or be hunted. And it might also kind of reflect um, needing to have that equivalent exchange of gifts this time of year where the gods would ride forth and bestow blessings upon their followers and upon the countryside. And then, you know, come Yule, you're going to want to be doing your bloats and your offerings up to them in exchange. Or you never know, maybe that's when the wild hunt would kind of come running through and get you if you hadn't been keeping up your end of things. Who can say? It's just a very fascinating concept to me and I think it's very interesting that you do find so many different versions of it so widespread among the northern and Celtic traditions and that it's so common to see this Odinic figure as the one leading the foray along with this dark goddess aspect figure. I just thought I'd sit down and do one last kind of spooky season themed video because it was just something that's been on my mind a lot lately with it kind of being the time that it sets off to start its ride and yeah just feeling that energy in the air myself and then for some reason you know i kind of had my, my notes jotted down here about it and i wasn't really planning on sitting down to film the video today because it, it is wednesday wodensday and i don't know if it was 
it's because of that, but as, as the day was going on, I just started feeling more and more compelled to have to sit down and film this video about the wild hunt for you. I hope that it was kind of a quick little helpful informative summary of what the concept of the wild hunt is and what it represents or embodies and my thoughts as to why Odin is the one that leads it and why sometimes you will see this goddess figure accompanying him or leading it as well. Just interesting concepts and energies for you to muse on and reflect upon as we enter that season of the year. Until next time, stay classy, pagans.